In this video of fluoroscopy, in a lateral view, we can see the lips anteriorly, and as we move down to the chin and move back, we can see the ramus of the mandible. We have the oral tongue leading down to the tongue base. We have the heart palate and the velum or the soft palate. During swallowing, as the bolus is moving back towards the tongue base, the soft palate or the velum needs to move backwards and make contact with the posterior pharyngeal wall. And this protects the nasopharynx or the nasal cavity from any material being penetrated into this area. The area here on the posterior pharyngeal wall where the soft palate moves back to is called the passivance pad or the passivance cushion. In this image, we can see some dentition. Very important for swallowing, the point where the ramus of the mandible meets the tongue base is called your swallow trigger point. So as the main head of the bolus moves posteriorly during a swallow, it is at this point that you expect the pharyngeal swallow to be initiated. If the main head of the bolus moves beyond this swallow trigger point, you have a pharyngeal swallow reflex delay. At the bottom of the tongue base, you have an area called the velleculae, which tend to fill with material post-swallow if the tongue base is weak. This is your epiglottis, which is a leaf-like structure. And during the swallow, the epiglottis should move down and make contact with the arytenoid cartilage. And this helps to protect the airway. We can see the hyoid bone, which during swallow should move anteriorly and superiorly. And this protects the airway and opens up the upper esophageal sphincter. In some cases, you can see the wings of the hyoid bone during video fluoroscopy. Further down the pharynx, we're able to see the airway entrance or the laryngeal vestibule. We can see a shadowing and on top are the false vocal cords. Then there is a small gap, which is the laryngeal ventricle below which are the true vocal cords. And it is only when food or drinks have passed these true vocal cords and down into the trachea that we consider it to be aspiration. Moving back up, we can in some cases see a structure which connects the arytenoid cartilage to the epiglottis and this is called the ariepiglottic fold. In this region here, you have the piriform sinuses on either side. These can really only be visualized when they're filled with barium on video fluoroscopy. If we drop down, we have the upper esophageal sphincter, which is a two to four centimeter high pressure zone which protects the esophagus, stops regurgitation back up into the pharynx. And it also stops us from swallowing too much air. Below this upper esophageal sphincter, we move into the cervical esophagus. We also need to look at the cervical vertebrae. We have the atlas or axis, which are the first and second vertebrae. And then we have the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh cervical vertebrae. And we need to rule out any osteophytes at the beginning of the video fluoroscopy procedure.